Yes, we're back again trying to find the perfect OS for this trash can. So this is my 2013 Mac Pro trash can uh, and we have been kind of on a bit of an adventure trying to find the perfect operating system for this. And today we're going to be looking at it using it as a server which on the surface might seem a bit odd um, and certainly from an efficiency point of view might not be the best however we do have a 12 core xeon processor in here with 24 threads and 64 gigabytes of ddr3 ram so it's kind of quite server like pop that back down again because it is incredibly heavy but anyway yeah i thought this might be a pretty good use case for this hardware if we run it as a headless home server it only cost me 220 pounds to buy and with some ssd upgrades and the cpu upgrade all in all about 300 pounds so it's definitely cheaper than the home server i currently have that i built myself so is it a good option well we're going to do a few different home servery tasks and see if it can hold up in 2025 so we'll be using ubuntu 24.04 which is the latest long-term release nice stable server os and we will be running this headless which means there is no monitor no use of kind of a graphical environment everything will be from the command line or web-based interfaces now the install process for ubuntu itself completely smooth very easy no problems here at all uh, and it is a plus side of this being an older intel mac these things do install other operating systems no problem at all and it was a very straightforward process so once we were all set up one of the first things i always do when i'm setting up a headless server is i use webmin webmin is a great tool that kind of gives you a web-based admin interface that allows you to monitor the system monitor cpu usage ram usage disk usage but also a lot of the kind of administrative tasks that you might need to do under linux can be done through the web interface and as someone who's not been a kind of a linux server manager for many years now although in the past life i did it's just quite nice having a user interface to be able to do these things uh, and not have to remember commands and everything else so it's a really good piece of software i definitely recommend installing it if you do have a similar situation where you're kind of setting up your first home server so what are we going to do today well we're going to look at three tasks that i currently use my home server for anyway so we could look to offload some of those tasks to this machine the first task is running a minecraft server so i have a local minecraft server that i run uh, for myself and my wife to play on but also for friends and other people who want to join so it is exposed to the internet uh, no you're not getting the details but it is something that i do the next thing that I've kind of been interested in trying, I haven't actually started doing it on my own home server, uh, is uh, running local uh, AI models. So kind of LLMs, but also looking at small language models as well. I think that's probably more fitting, but we're going to have a look around running some language models and seeing how well this hardware can handle that. The 64 gigabytes of RAM could be quite useful here. And then finally, we're going to see what it's like as a media server. So we're going to use Jellyfin. Uh, on my main system, I actually use Plex, but I've been really interested in moving to an open source alternative. So we're going to try out Jellyfin and see what it's like. Uh, and importantly, see if we can render, uh, see if we can transcode 4K media on this thing. Um, I personally do use a GPU to transcode media just because I don't have much storage space, but do have available GPUs. So. Uh, I make use of that, which means I only have to keep the 4K copy of the uh, video and anything smaller can be just transcoded on the fly. Okay, so heading into Minecraft servers, uh, I actually use a piece of software called Crafty Controller, which is just a really nice interface to manage Minecraft servers. It makes it very easy to spin up new servers um, and just very easy to kind of manage that environment if you maybe want to have different servers that you can turn on and off some modded servers, some other things as well, and you can kind of monitor what's going on with them all. So it's a really good user interface. I definitely recommend it if you're looking for something to manage some Minecraft servers locally. Uh, and so we got that installed with no problem at all and, and got a Minecraft server set up. It, it is very straightforward. There's no real uh, worry there. 
and logging in as by myself and testing it out everything seems to be running fine it seems quite able to do that again minecraft is quite ram heavy so it's quite a useful kind of open 64 gigabytes of ram to keep things going it's not very multi-core thread optimized so there's definitely going to probably be some issues with the fact that our cores are running at a lower clock speed individually so the single core performance here isn't as amazing as i'd like so how do i actually test the performance here because yeah with me just on the server it works perfectly fine well i had a look around and actually found some kind of bot automated testing benchmarking things that you can do the first one was a project called mc bots which supports the latest version of minecraft uh, unfortunately it doesn't actually like automate the moving of the bots it just logs a load of bots into your server and then they just stand there which is fine but it's not really benchmarking like a more realistic world where you've got players that are moving about loading new chunks and kind of exploring the world so i found another project called minecraft stress test unfortunately this one doesn't seem to be as up to date it isn't supporting the latest version of minecraft so i did have to downgrade to version 1.2 one which is not that old but is still a downgrade uh, to run this test but i still thought it was worthwhile because crucially this one does automate a, a randomized kind of movement for all of the bots that you load in so it's going to load new chunks it's going to kind of have to transmit all that movement data between the clients super useful for what i'm trying to test so we started out with loading 20 bots and that was actually no problem at all surprisingly it was quite happy just buzzing along uh, having those bots slowly drift out into the world some of them did unfortunately drown and respawn because they drifted out into water but that actually worked really really well and frankly i would never be in a situation where i'd have more than 20 players online anyway so that would kind of confirm to me that actually this trash can works very well as a minecraft server for my needs however how far can we actually go with this so naturally i thought let's see how what would actually cause the server to crash and i loaded up a hundred bots <laughs> uh, and needless to say uh, once those 100 bots had loaded in and they started moving the server ground to a halt and crashed so it's fair to say that the server can't handle a thousand a hundred bots now the key thing here of course is we are using the vanilla minecraft server there are other minecraft servers like paper mc uh, that exist that are more optimized certainly more optimized for multi-core situations um, and definitely could improve this but we're just using the vanilla here just to test the capabilities of a basic minecraft server so i dialed the number of bots down to 50 again way more than i'd ever need uh, but actually it just about handled it there was definitely lag certainly as lots of the bots were going into new areas and loading them but it worked it never crashed and it didn't fall too far behind in terms of tick speed and stuff so i actually would say that you could operate a server on this with about 50 players and it would still be functional again i would do some optimizations here and you could probably improve that experience but i have to say i'm kind of impressed for 300 pounds all in you get a minecraft server that's up to uh running you know up to about 50 players so if you consider the the difference of actually renting a server from somewhere it would pay for itself you know within a, a year a year and a half two years um pretty reasonably and of course you have a lot more kind of opportunity with this because you own the hardware and you can do other stuff at the same time at no point was the system as a whole overtaxed uh, we didn't run out of ram we didn't uh, obviously utilize all the cores so we could be running other things we might even be able to run multiples of that same server in just two separate instances on different threads so all in all as a minecraft server it's kind of good actually now yes you're going to have more optimized uh, computers to be able to do this on more power efficient computers as well but again for 300 pounds i think it's a pretty decent deal uh and plus you know you get to say that you run minecraft on a trash can so that's cool too so next up let's look at ai now this is an area that i've kind of been quite averse to until more recently 
I've just started kind of dipping my feet into language models and chat GPT and uh, that kind of world. Um, and so I was curious, I wanted to see what, what it would take to run some of these models locally on my own hardware. And it's actually incredibly easy to do so. There's a project called Olama, I think, uh, that basically allows you to load large language models and small language models as well. And then uh, you can then inter interact with those over the command line. But there are also projects that build a UI for you. One such project is Open Web UI, which literally gives you a web UI that looks very similar to the OpenAI ChatGPT UI um, and allows you to interact with whatever loaded model you have from Olama in a graphical web-based interface. So we installed both of these. Um, I will say I had some issues getting it set up properly. Uh, the Docker install seemed to only like NVIDIA GPUs, and I very much wanted to try and use the AMD GPUs that we had in here. I wasn't sure if these were going to work because I wasn't sure if they were going to be new enough to be supported. Uh, unfortunately, again, because of the nature of the GPUs here, they're custom built by uh, AMD for Apple. So it's hard to find specific information on them. I started by loading a uh, Gemma 3 small language model, which is kind of from the Gemini family from Google, uh, and asking it basic questions, it ran very quickly. But as soon as I tried to ask it to like write a bash script for me and do some more lo logic, uh, it really slowed down significantly. Uh, and I noticed that it was only using the CPUs, it wasn't using the GPUs. So I did go down a bit of a rabbit hole trying to get these GPUs to work. There's a AMD GPU install script that you can use to install the latest drivers for your GPUs. Because we were running on a headless server, I, maybe the right drivers weren't installed. So we went down that path and we gave that a go and uh, it made no difference. I then also tried uh, installing the, is it ROCM, O-R-C-M, whatever it is, package, which is basically kind of the compute package for AMD, which the likes of Olama then uses to interface with AMD graphics cards. Um, and again, it didn't seem to actually make any difference. There wasn't anything supported. So unfortunately, it does seem like we're stuck with just CPU support here. We've got the 64 gigs of RAM, so we can at least load full models into RAM. But then using the CPU, it isn't the quickest of experiences. I thought I'd start with the DeepSeq R1, 70 billion data points. Is it data points? I don't know. I'm new to AI. Anyway, 70 billion bits of data, uh, which is about 40 something gigabytes of storage used. So it could all be loaded into RAM. However, in interacting with the model was still incredibly slow. Um, I basically, as a benchmark, asked all of the models to create a bash script to install the Android developer bridge. And uh, the DeepSeek model took about 10 minutes to think and then about 18 minutes to actually write out its answer. Now, don't get me wrong, the answer it gave was actually very good, very detailed, and lots of information describing what the script was doing and everything else. So it was a good answer, but it was very slow. Running this without GPU support is kind of a bad idea, and this was clearly why. So I thought I'd drop it down to uh, Gemma 3, their 4 billion data points, um, and this worked better. It took about two minutes of thinking plus writing time, and it still generated a fairly decent response. It definitely wasn't as good as the deep seek response, but it was still a reasonable thing. So, you know, I think two minutes is kind of reasonable for these more tricky tasks, um, especially if you're not in like time constraints and you do really want to be able to run these on local hardware. And then I did try the Gemma 3 1 billion data point model uh, so it's you know a quarter of the size um, and again it was much faster it took about 45 seconds all in but the answer was not that great it didn't actually do what i'd asked it to do um, and it kind of just gave me information about the android de um, developer bridge so it wasn't as good in that regard that's for sure so all in all in terms of using this as a machine to run ai language models it doesn't really work uh, specifically and crucially those the gpus in there are just too old they do not seem to be supported uh, 
the device is too kind of niche that I couldn't find any information of anyone that managed to get it working. Uh, definitely love to be corrected on that, but I couldn't find anything. So unfortunately, it didn't really work as a AI machine. So then finally, Jellyfin. Well, again, that was a very easy thing to install and get set up. They even also provide some test media, uh, which was actually quite useful. So I could actually test the transcoding abilities uh, from different uh, from different resolution. So I could test the transcoding abilities. And um, this time, the GPUs were actually supported. I could actually use the GPUs as rendering devices. However, the performance was horrendous. Uh, it could not transcode 4K in real time, it would not work. It could not even transcode 1080p down to 720 in real time. It was really, really slow. Uh, I, weirdly so, to be honest. I feel like something wasn't working right here, but it was definitely using the GPUs and it just definitely not working. Having said that, because the transcoding process is very well optimized for multi-threading, uh, I could actually transcode a single 4K stream on the CPU using those 24 threads. So yes, it can only do one stream, but actually it does work. It does work using the CPU. Again, really not the most efficient way to do this at all, um, but it works. And it, for my use case where it's literally just myself and my wife that's accessing a, a media library, um, it would work. I think though that it is going to be a lot more performant and energy efficient to just use a GPU for this purpose um, and continue using my normal server. So again, on the media side, eh, if you didn't have to transcode and you were just direct streaming, it works perfectly. And of course, you've got those six Thunderbolt ports on the machine. So you could have a lot of storage attached to this device and use it as um, kind of the compute node, if you like. So that's definitely possible which is kind of cool. Again, not the most energy efficient way, but again, for the price, the fact that you can have a trash can as your server, kind of cool. So there we go, we're gonna wrap that up. In terms of using the trash can as a server, it's a bit of a mixed bag. Actually, as a Minecraft server, it works really, really well. And I may well at some point end up commissioning this machine as just a Minecraft server, running multiple Minecraft servers. Uh, because yeah, it, it did that job very well. In terms of affordability, being able to use your own hardware and um, having that 64 gigabytes of RAM, it really does actually work well. I'm impressed on that. Uh, in terms of other things, AI models and the like, it, it, it really falls down with the GPUs. That's the biggest problem here. And that's the problem we continue to find with all of these videos where we're trying to find a good OS it's really hampered by its GPU performance. So if you need a home server that's more focused on the RAM and the CPU performance, this actually works quite well. Things like running Minecraft servers or game servers in general, being able to do, you know, file storage servers, media streaming servers that don't need transcoding. These kind of things work very well with it. So, you know, it's not a loss. It's definitely an option. I still don't know if it's the best option. So we are gonna continue hunting. But we are gonna wrap it up there for today. I hope you have enjoyed this video. As always, I've really enjoyed putting it together. And I will see you again in another video very, very soon. Bye for now.